What's up, people? For this week's podcast, I sat down in LA with my friend Eric to talk about his life as a comedian and other randomness. Uh, I met him many years ago when he was doing some shows down here in San Diego. And all these years later, he was actually one of the main reasons that I got this podcast going. Uh, he's got jokes and he's just a nice human being. You know, he made me some he made me some amazing cinnamon tea to sip on for this podcast. And when I was about to leave after recording, he sent me home with a fancy bag of tea and offered me some B12 because I was feeling drowsy. You know who does that? Nice people. That's who. So make sure to check him out at a show or on the internets after listening. Now, with all that said, I hope you enjoy this conversation I had with Eric Schwartz. You should always roll on the podcast. You just sat down. No, be- yeah. You just sat down. You, I wasn't ready. Because then you get people, when they're not thinking they're on the podcast, really being themselves. You really capture them. That's you true. Know, you really capture their essence. Yeah. Because they don't know they're being recorded. I know. And when they be recorded, then they're like, oh, hi, hi, how's it going? Now I'm on a podcast. I know you recorded. See, that's why I'm, I'm doing that's bits That's why you now. changed it? Yeah. yeah See, I know I you started. I, I saw difference. your your finger just I know it was pretty obvious. Flick the, flick the switch. But what I was saying, you guys missed it, that are listening on the podcast, I was flowing. Yeah, it was pretty legit, actually. I said, I flow like gravity, never had a cavity, got more lines than the wine has got family. Hey. Who's that from? Do you know? It's my favorite group. No, I don't know. A Tribe Called Quest, Fife Dog, rest in peace. Oh, dang, dude. I didn't know you were like that. What? I don't even like that you in that Tribe Called Quest. Dude, Tribe okay. Called Quest mm-hmm. is the best hip-hop group of all time. And when, I, when I met you, you was what? Smooth E. You still doing that? Um, I don't really go by Smooth E anymore because, you know, Eric Schwartz is, is um, it's a lot more flashy for the stage. Flashy. I felt like Smooth E was so ordinary mm. and i really needed something to grab people's attention and so i made up this name eric schwartz <laughs> and i was like that's it it's got a ring to it that name's gonna pop yeah that's it's really hilarious. good pop. yeah it really is and um because you know sometimes people and actually i had somebody recently list me under a pseudonym under for for on the comedy club for uh, one of my upcoming shows but they mix it up they did they were trying to put smoothie but they put easy e and oh, I yeah, t- that's a totally different thing is what that is. Yeah. Yeah. I told him like four times, can you take that off? Can you please take that off? Uh-huh. And then they're like, why? And I'm like, he's a dead rapper from NWA. Yeah, not, Rest in peace. Not me is who that is. Yeah. And I mean, I don't use smoothie anymore, really. Yeah. I mean, not that I, if somebody's going to refer to me that way. Sure. I'll, I'll be, I, I would respond. That's just funny. That's how long ago I met you that you were yeah. still using that. Oh, I mean, I stopped using it like this week, but... <laughs> but but I back then I was using actually just it too. right when we started recording this podcast yeah. I saw I was like using it, I so. choose for this hour <laughs> to forego the name Eric Schwartz Eric Schwartz yeah yeah you could if you really want like that I don't know why well because I scratch it when I when I say it and Is sometimes that why it's stuck I go, in my brain that Eric way? Schwartz yeah Eric Schwartz so sometimes when people see me they go Eric Schwartz they go Eric Schwartz <laughs> but it's really and it's also my Instagram handle and my um. Uh, what uh, my Instagram is uh, Eric Schwartz, and that's just Eric Schwartz with three oh, E's. There's multiple E's that's how it's pronounced. Right. Yeah, it's E E E R I C. Okay, S-E-H. I didn't know if that was because that was that name was already taken. Right. Yes, that's why. But then I was like, <laughs> that is why. But then I, you know, I put but it with three E's, reason. and now it it makes sense to my branding. Yeah, of, uh, Ooh, Eric Schwartz branding. You're good at all that stuff. Well, you got, you, I feel like you got that. You got that Instagram, Twitter. All that stuff on kind of lock. You figured it out. I feel like branding is the corporate word for Mm -hmm. matching, you know, or like making sense. Sure. Or like having everything tie back in when you're writing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's your thesis statement if you're a student. Yes. Uh, You know, that's kind of like your brand, I guess. But it sounds so cold saying brand. It does. It does sound a little bit corporate. It sounds sounds non-creative. Everybody's creating brands nowadays. It's the thing. Yeah. But, no, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you're on top of all that stuff. You always seem like you're busy. You're posting. You're always on the, on the, on the hot topics of the moment. I try to make the content delicious for the consumer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, I always try to – I always try to make it make as much sense or, like, be as palatable or be as easily digestible without being stupid – 
uh, as possible. You know, I, w- I want them to get it. I want them to really understand what I'm trying to say. So maybe that's what comes across yeah. of being like well branded or something. But it's just like I'm trying to be clear. <laughs> I'm trying to make myself clear. How long have you been doing this? Well, um, I've been doing comedy. Um, I, it's hard to really say. Yeah. But I, I think my, the, well, the first time I ever did stand up comedy, I was 19 years old. Okay. I was a, I was a first time I ever did it was on a family vacation on a cruise and they had a f- talent oh, show. They're like, sign cruise. up. Yeah. They're like, sign up. And I signed up. My dad helped me write my, uh, act and it was, <laughs> it was really bad. But, uh, you know, the first joke went well, the second joke bombed and the third joke ended strong. So, oh. yeah. So you left them wanting more. I le- yeah. I don't know if they wanted more. I wanted more. So that's not always what you wanted to do or was it? Um, you know, when I was growing up, like in high school, I, w- I was a big fan of comedy and I would like recite com comedy to like stand up to my, to my friends on the pool deck. I was a swimmer and, um, you know, I would do like characters from Saturday night live and, and, um, my friends would laugh and they would say, you should be a comedian. And I'd be like, I don't know how to do, I don't know. I, haven't, I don't have any of my own material. Yeah. So then I just started writing stuff down. I'm like, hey, maybe that'd be funny. Maybe that'd be funny. And then finally when I, I tried to do it, I was, um, you know, I was 19. I actually, I actually that summer had done a, um, an internship for radio because I, I loved radio as well. And I was doing characters on the radio and stuff like that. And uh, so I was, you know, that all that summer I was like getting my chops up, doing some performance and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think that was... That was uh, like my first. That was my first like intro into comedy. And then when I was in um, college, I did it like I just did my own shows at school. I would put on my own um, like coffee house night. I w- we would call it. It would be like an open mic night, and I would yeah. host it. Everyone would sign up, and people would sh- everyone would show up because their friends would want to see them perform. Yeah. And then um, so really the first couple years of doing comedy, I just was like isolated at school in college. I never had any. Um, you know, any comedy clubs around there. I went to Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, so there were no comedy clubs there. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really get, get exposed to other comedians or other comedy clubs until about two years in when I came came back to LA. Yeah. Interesting. So then, yeah. So you had to create your own opportunities at first. Yeah. Actually I do them. I still do that. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Not hustle. Yeah. You have to be, you have to be even, I mean, I've always noticed, like, if you create your own opportunities, that's the only way you'll succeed. You have to create your own opportunities, even if you have. I feel like, when, when, like, talent. When we, when we, we always say we want to sign with an agent or a manager or have somebody, um, you know, take us to the promised land. Basically, is what we think is going to happen. But then I examine the phrase making it. When am I going to make it? I asked myself one day. I go, when am I going to make it? When am yeah. I going to make it? And then I was like, oh, yeah. Listen to what I'm saying. When am I gonna going make to it? make oh, it? I get it. I, I have to create it. my own opportunity. Yeah, so. for sure. That's really interesting. And it's like, what what do you define as making it? How do right. You de- how do you define that? Because you, I mean, you support yourself off of this. Yeah, I guess you really don't ever want to make it because then that means you've, you're complacent and you don't have any other goal. Yeah, and then you're like, where do I go? That's right. a detriment to a lot of people. Yeah. When they get to this place, they had this one very specific goal, and they said, okay, well, when I get to this, mm-hmm. then I'm, I've made it. This is the pinnacle. And then they go, well, this is where I'm at. Now what? Yeah. Now what do I do? And then yeah. they freak out. I guess in, in some ways I have made it according to, you know, what my former self thought. Yeah. You know? Like my former self was like, I just want to be able to headline at the improvs. And I do, I do that all the time now, you know? Um, and or like, you know, I just want to I just want to go out on the road as a headliner. I just want to, uh, you know, whatever it is. And yeah. I've accomplished a lot of those goals. That's weird. Do yeah. you write them down so that you can recognize when you've done them? I do. Or but, you know, sneak up on you. We're like, oh, my I goals did it. My goals can change like almost from day to day. Yeah. You know, like my goals, my goals change all the time. So I feel like it is important to write. It's mm-hmm. important to write all the time. So you kind of keep stock of what you're feeling right now. For sure. I feel like I forget. I'll make goals and then 
if I don't like I've, I've started to write them down. Mm -hmm. So I'll write them down. And then I look at them a year later and everything that I wrote down a year ago, I'm technically doing, but I wouldn't have noticed that had I not written that down. I would have still thought that I hadn't made as much progress. So you're saying your writing is like, uh, it's almost like, um, history. It's yeah. almost, it's almost I must like just have a poor memory. That's what we're, <laughs> <laughs> I must just not be able to remember very well. Well, yeah, well, it's just like a timeline of, or like a, a, a record of like, okay. Yeah. I say in this moment, mm -hmm. what are my goals? What am I aiming for? And then I'll leave that alone and then I'll come back to it. How often do you okay. read back on your old journals or whatever? I'm trying to do like once every six months. -ish. Okay. I'm trying to do something like that. Or what? if I'm questioning whether I'm making enough forward movement, yeah, I look back to see what I've done. Like, is it one I'm of those? List, I'm a list maker now. You're a list maker? Yeah, my, my phone, you should see it. It's full of <laughs> lists. <laughs> and then uh, pretty soon on your list is like, go through the lists. That's going to be on your list. Remind yourself to go through lists. Yeah, well, that's the one thing about lists is I used to make them all the time when I was younger, but I'd never refer to them, ever. I also feel like if you, if you write something every day or if you write something often, it's just in your consciousness more. Because sure. you've, you've drawing you've attention. done a physical thing where you've taken a pen and you put it on a paper and you have made something that's more permanent than digital, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you put it on a paper and it's like you are hereby, here, hereby inscrawling on a permanent piece of matter. Yep. Something that you're matters. You're writing it. Yeah. You're writing on a matter because it matters to you. True. Yeah. It's weird to write things down now. It does make, make it feel more solid. Yeah. I mean, really, if you, sometimes you, you haven't written for a while and you try to write again, like, does your hand, hand cramp up? No, but it's like, oh, what it are does. you doing? It feels like a new, <laughs> it feels like a, a foal that was just born. And oh, it's it all doesn't clumsy. have his legs. Yeah, it's very clumsy. It's all clumsy, like you're trying to write with your left hand. Yeah. And I don't know how to stand up because I just was dropped out of my mom. Yeah. Oh. You know, <laughs> like a baby I foal. Got a, I got a weird visual on that. I got a strange yeah, visual on that. That's what I wanted. That's interesting. So what is your creative process like? Um, well, that, that writing. Does it require a lot of handwriting? Yeah, I try, to, I try to write by hand a lot, as much as I can. More and more, though, I, I, I've been skipping that and just going straight to the, straight to the computer, which is it's dangerous. I always try to keep it. I, I know I'm more creative off the, off the computer. And I, you know what the most important thing for me in the creative process is to not judge myself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If I'm being super judgmental, I can't get anywhere. Yeah. I just stare at a blank page and I write four words and then I erase them. Right. And it's a practice. That's a practice. That's a muscle. That's a muscle of like if you're in the practice of not censoring yourself or, or I mean, that censor is always going to be there in your in your brain. That's your, your monster, right? Yeah. I, I read this book called The Artist's Way and they describe it as the the censor, the monster in your head that always tells you you're not good enough and, or you're not, you're not enough or whatever. If you can just dare to suck, as one of my acting teachers, Leslie Kahn, famously says, mm -hmm. uh, dare to suck. And what happens is when you start molding that clay, then you start, you, you, you chisel it, you chisel it more, you get it, you get it, uh, you know, you, you mold it even more. And finally, one day you'll be branded. You'd you be to very branding. clear. That's how you get to branding. Uh, no, but you, but you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Trial and error, trial and error. And just that exercise. I always, I always like liken creativity to working out. You know, it's a muscle. Different that, muscle, the mental yeah. muscle. Mm -hmm. And you get strong. You just definitely get strong. The more and more you do something, you can't draw for a year straight and not improve, right? If you yep. drew, one picture every day for 20 minutes or drew something every day for 20 minutes, there's no way that in 365 days you're not going to be better at drawing. Yeah. Right? Draw a little cow every day. Right. Your cow's going to be off get, the chain. It's going to get clean looking eventually. Yeah. It's going to be good. super branded. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have a branded cow by the end of it. Yeah. That's so funny. See, what I realized that I had to do because I'm super judgmental of everything that I do especially like writing, mm -hmm. I have to throw myself into like a free write okay. where I just, yeah. empt I'm just emptying my That's brain, it. right? That's it. I'm just throwing words. It's not supposed to be good. It's not supposed to be good. That's what I tell myself. Right. It doesn't have to be good. It's just whatever's coming out of your brain. Yes. I do that for like probably about five pages of mm -hmm. typed page. Typed? Yeah. 
I do the typed page because otherwise, you know, my my hand's too slow to keep up with my brain now. Oh, really? If I'm free writing, mm-hmm. and that's just you know because you're just throwing thought. Oh, on I thought them. you were going to talk about when my hand my hand is too slow for my brain. Oh. <laughs> I have a different experience, but go on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, so I'll do that. And then what happens when I do that free write is that I can tell kind of what, what topics are floating around in my brain. Mm-hmm. And then from that, I can pull a topic and then I'll give myself somewhere to go from there. there That's how go. I get yeah. from like, I don't know what to write. Like yeah. if I have to write something and I'm like, I don't know what I'm writing because I'm not aware of what's going on in my own head. You That's just go zero it. to a hundred real quick. That's how I do it. That's how Drake wrote that song. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of like different versions of it. He was like, um, I go nothing to something in rapidity in a rapid motion. No, nah, that's not good. And then he was like, uh, I goes, I go zero to 60 in under six seconds. Nah. <laughs> Finally, he came up with zero to a hundred real quick. And then and it was like, perfect. that's, that's the thing. That's how you do it. Yeah. But, but that's, you got to get past the blank page. Right. The morning pages is what the artist way talks about. And, um, so you're supposed to do three pages every morning mm-hmm. and a free form free, just like don't censor yourself, write Almost as fast as you can is what it says. Like, right. right don't because stop. Then you bypass the conscious mind, right? It has yeah. to go to the subconscious thoughts tucked away in the back that you've been it's, ignoring. It's almost a meditation. They sure. say it's a form of meditation. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I totally do that. Totes. Totally. Why do I say that? That I would I never say that. Because you live in LA? I never said that before. Is that a thing? I just... I just bring out the word totes in you? That's yeah. not good. You know why? It's because I, I wasn't totes. censoring myself. I was like, why not? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Because you're free. Yeah. And then I censored myself real quick. And I was like, I never say that. You wanted people to know it. Yeah. Because I felt like that was stupid to say and I didn't want people to judge me. But I, so I judged myself real quick. Yeah. yeah, see? Because when you take ownership of it, like it doesn't matter. People make fun of you now. Because you're like, I said it was silly. So there. yeah. So don't judge me, people. I already judged myself. Too late. I took it. <laughs> I took the opportunity. You can have it. Self deprecating humor. Yeah, that's why I shaved my head so people couldn't make fun of me for going bald anymore. I'm like, look, I'm already bald. Too late. Sorry. Play it up. <laughs> Play it up, dude. Right. Why not? Do you mind being bald? Do you mind me being bald? No. Okay, good. Then I don't <laughs> mind being bald. <laughs> what if you I said, said it yes like there. it's a bad thing? <laughs> no, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. No, I think here's what happens when guys go bald. The reason that it's that it's like a little bit of maybe taboo okay. in our in our world. It happens to I don't know what the percentage is, but every guy, every like a, guy is like a hair. Lot. Every guy's hair thins at some level yeah. in their life. And we it scares us because our hair is part of our identity. True. Heavily true. Yeah. Speaking as a woman. Like now like when I look at people and they go, Oh, my hair's messed up and I'm like, What? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, it looks almost the same as when it's perfect. Yeah, that's you know? me every day of my and life. And I used to be like that. I used to be like, oh, dude, my hair's messed up. I got I to gotta, I gotta do my hair. Yeah. And like, if one thing was, like, out of whack, like, one little strand or one piece was, like, going the wrong way, I would think everyone else would see that it's yeah. it, it's wrong. But, like, you know, it's, it's people don't even look at you that carefully. We're looking so much harder at the little tiny mm-hmm. details of ourselves than anybody else would ever think to do. Yeah, because you've seen you more than anybody. I know. I've seen me. I've seen me in every way, up close, all day, all the time. You know what I mean? In those hotel mirrors that flip over and magnify, you've looked at yourself Just, in that uh, for min- for for minutes, hours, maybe. Yeah, it's so funny. Somebody was like, every time you pass a mirror, you look into it. I was like, yeah, I'm not admiring. I'm checking to make sure everything's okay. I'm just you should sure admire every. I don't I haven't gotten that to that place in life yet, <laughs> <laughs> where I can just sit there and admire. I'm checking on stuff, right? But yeah, like we're very meticulous about things. Now I want to see a picture of you with hair. Okay, I've never seen it. Oh, it's I'm, on the phone? I'm adorable here. <laughs> um, I, sometimes I have dreams of about having hair? having hair again. I'm oh. like, yes, I have so many options now. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, um. I mean, look. I like being bald now. I mean, it's so, it's so much easier. You're super. You don't have to worry to it. about it. I feel like when I was I was thinning out, and people could see I was going bald. It was confusing to people. Like, does he know, or am I supposed to think he has hair or not? You know. But now that I'm, it's it's another thing of branding. It really is. 
Yeah. Let me Google Eric Schwartz with hair. See what comes up. Oh. See if somebody, because I wouldn't have put that up. Somebody else would have put that, would have had to put that up in the search terms. Eric Schwartz. And that means I have fans that remember me from back then. Eric Schwartz with hair. Let's see what happens when you pull that up. Okay, here's one from like, I'm already going bald though in this, but this is like 2004. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can envision it. What do you like better? This, oh, bald for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this is like, well, I look like a total dork here too in this picture. <laughs> You guys can't see it out there, but just, it was. I'll put that on the Instagram post. It was that stupid. Picture. Don't put that. <laughs> you, it's actually on Netflix. It's the, it's the, um, it's the Chocolate Sundays live on Sunset Strip. I did like a little three minute uh, set on there. Kevin Hart's on it, and Cat Williams, and all these really great comedians. And I'm I'm doing like a three minute thing. Oh, that's cool. And it, and it has like a yeah. Here's when I was right before I started shaving my head. So it's I have like a little shadow. Sure. Of hair. Because it, it feels like this is the point where most men just decide to shave. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you just own it. Right. You just got to own it. Own it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, my sunscreen bills have gone up through the roof. Oh, I bet. I should wear sunscreen. I don't. You got to wear sunscreen, man. I don't do it. Sunscreen. I think I'm a little vitamin D deficient right now, actually. I'm never in the sun. I have some IUs in my cupboard. You're here at my house, by yeah. the way. That's where I am. I, yeah. Uh, I have... Uh, <laughs> I had people didn't know, like, why would I have vitamin D on hand? <laughs> I just carry it around just in case. No, I'm telling you guys, Courtney Diamond is amazing. She brings a studio <laughs> in a little backpack. She has... In a tiny little backpack, too. No, That's pretty funny, too. Like, But it's like a complete studio. Like, you have microphone arms so that, like, you clipped them onto my table. Yeah. So it's like a broadcast uh, stand, a mic stand, mic clip with... Your your Zoom recorder, you have uh, you know your cables. You got all this stuff, so yeah, it's it's a pro, it's a pro it's a pro setup. I tried it's a pro mobile setup. Pro mobile, exactly. I was like, how do I get this super mobile and easy? The idea of bringing my laptop with me was like, no, yeah, no thanks. The technology has you know gotten so good. Like I used to, I used to travel because I, I I have to sometimes do voiceover demos and stuff like on the road. So I used to I have to travel, or if I'm just going to record a song on the road or whatever, I'd have to travel with like a um, an audio interface, which is like, you know, something you can record or, or put a recording mic through into your computer. So I always travel with my computer, and then I would have to bring this audio interface and then a nice condenser microphone, which is like a pretty big microphone and. So I would have to bring a lot of stuff. And now it's it's getting a little smaller, but still I always want to be prepared for whatever happens. For whatever. I yeah. know when I saw you when I saw you last week and you're like, you didn't bring your stuff in your car? I was like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to see you for like 20 minutes. Oh, last when I saw you last week? In San Diego, yeah. Oh, right. I thought that was going to be a couple minutes. Yeah, you could record a podcast in a car. Yeah, I could. I it's mean, like technically a sound with, it's, that's very true. You I could do that. ideas now. Yeah, I've I've done recording in, in a car before like i've done like voiceover stuff in a car because it sounds sounds really good yeah that's interesting yeah you gotta just be careful about like cars going by but like if you're on a quiet quiet street you just got to take people up to really creepy remote areas to record mm-hmm. on you know overlooking yeah. you get maybe a nice view go to an yeah. overlook and then whoa sounds romantic <laughs> sounds good why didn't we do the podcast there courtney <laughs> I didn't know where to find an overlook. I don't know. I don't know my way around LA as much as I should. Oh yeah, Mulholland. I'll take you up there. Mm-hmm. It's right. It's close to here. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Like, I don't like my place is not. It's not. It's not romantic enough. We have to go outside and then go to, uh, yeah, overlook. <laughs> You're like hit pause. Wait for nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll start. We'll start again. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Well, I, I mean, well, I'm looking at, at your podcast and I'm like, you've told me that you wanted to do this for a long, long time. Yeah. And I was like, you got to do it. You got to do this. You're and a main motivator. I was? Yeah. And me getting started? Heck yeah. Sure. Because we had that conversation at uh, the comedy club when you were down in San Diego. Yeah. And you told me. Oh my God. That I might Sometimes look into I it. help people. <laughs> I feel so good. That's when I started doing all my little research about all this studio stuff. Oh, really? Stuff. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. So I could figure out what I needed. See, a lot of people talk. 
And then they never go through with it. And like you totally went through with it, like to a level. I super went through with it. To a level beyond what I thought you would do. Because look at these. I'm talking about these recording arms. I'm talking about these studio arms, bringing your whole full studio. You're a very technical person. Where I mean, and I and I hate to say I don't mean to sound sexist or anything, but a lot of um, female humans Mm -hmm. are not tech savvy or this kind of. uh, Not I want to say tech savvy. Audio. You don't see a lot of uh, female audio engineers. Um, Yeah, I guess not. You just don't in the U.S. I I worked with one actually last week that and she was awesome uh, at this at the show, and I'm seeing them more now. I'm seeing more like. Females in like technical, like audio and video and stuff like that. Um, when I was in India, all a lot of females, like it wasn't a gender thing. It yeah. was yeah. When I did shows in India, in India, that's surprising. Yeah, yeah the, because they were like it was actually I probably worked with like equal number of males and females uh, to do like audio and stuff like that out there. It was interesting. You're doing shows out in India? Yeah, I went out there and um. There was like, okay, I'll, I'm gonna do. I'll do. I'll say what I say in my show. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I say. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to like. <laughs> I don't want to do material on you, but. Uh, like, but I'm gonna. Okay. This is what I say. I go. Yeah. I go. I went out to India. The people were so nice. There were pictures of me everywhere. They were like, no, that's Gandhi. <laughs> that's how I opened my shows in India. And then I go, look at this man. I'm on the money. And. <laughs> I pull out a dollar bill and I, it's Gandhi on the money. Oh, dang. Uh, yeah. Does that get him? Yeah, I was like, can you break this? Because I want to be the change. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's pretty clever. Thanks. Pretty I clever. try to do it. Yeah. I try. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, so India, um, to do the shows, we a, a couple of years ago with this guy, Veer Das. If you haven't heard of him, he was just named as one of... Uh, Variety, Variety Magazine's top comedians to watch in uh, 2017, which is huge for a guy from India. He's the biggest comedian in India right now, like out of India, guy who a native Indian. Yeah. Uh, who he in the two years ago we did his comedy festival called the Pajama Comedy Festival, and uh, it was that his second. Comfortable. Yeah, it was really comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, we wore we wore some pajamas. I did get in the spirit. I wore some pajamas. Um, <laughs> But but he's is amazing. Like I think the difference between India and the U.S. when it comes to comedy, as far, as far as the comedians, is that a lot of comedians get into comedy here because of the lo- the lifestyle of, you know, I can I can get drunk and smoke weed and then you know wake up at the crack of noon and and then <laughs> uh, go do a show at night. Like yeah. kind of be what's that what's that word like a uh, I don't want to say lazy, but like, um, oh, that's a, it's like, uh, oh, that lifestyle, whatever that lifestyle is, you could yeah. be very creative and, and, and do a lot it's of things. Just a free, yeah. It's a free lifestyle where you're controlling your own time where you're kind of, you know, you're kind of you drifting or gliding. I'm not saying all comedians are like that because yeah. of obviously I am the antithesis of that, but, um, there are some people, uh, a good number of comedians that get into it. I feel like because they love that lifestyle, they want that lifestyle. But in in India, what I saw generally, if you were going to stereotype the Indian comedian, it's somebody that's like an engineer or like a doctor or like, um, you know, somebody who is very, very educated, who just loves to do comedy and wants like that, that uh, who wants to exercise their creativity. And they're so they're super like they did this. Comedy festival was like 120 shows in five cities in two weeks or something. And I was like, that they were so organized. And they all worked together. They all supported each other, which is harder to find here in the U.S. So I really admired the way that they, that they conducted themselves and that they were so high-functioning as opposed to... <laughs> A lot yeah. of comedians in the U.S. And, they, you know, a lot of... It's not so much about the, the lifestyle. It's yeah. They just wanted that outlet. Yeah, they just loved the craft, but they were also very like organized people and yeah. high functioning people and um didn't have egos. I didn't notice anybody with an ego out there. Yeah. You Opposite know. of LA. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can find hey, I know there are plenty of great sure. comedians that are hardworking and um but they're, you know, 
Also, there's just a bigger pool of people out here that do com- that do comedy. Comedy's new over there. It's you know less than a decade old out there. So yeah, I I just feel like out here in in, in the in the U.S. The stereotype or the archetype, actually, of a comedian is, uh, you know, somebody who's damaged and (laughs) sad and smokes weed all day and sits on the couch all day and does nothing until that 10 minutes at night or that one hour at night where they go out and they they do their show. I'm not like that at all. Like, I don't seem to carry any any darkness. I mean, very light. Look, everyone does. Everyone has their darkness. And I have, you know, seem like a very well adjusted. I try. Happy individual. And I think that being creative helps me with that. I yeah. mean, you know, I'm not going to say I don't have, I have never had problems because obviously I'd be a big douche. <laughs> <laughs> so far, my life's been perfect. Yeah. So far, my life's been perfect. And I'm very judgmental uh, on other people. Like, why do you have to have problems? I mean, <laughs> just stop having them. Just ha- don't have problems. Yeah. It's that simple. I think my. I think maybe what you see is like what you see of the the positivity is more like how I try to process it. Mm-hmm. I try to I try to process it, any you know any problems or whatever that I'm having and in, into something that's positive if I can do it. You yeah. know, and not everything's not everything in my show is like positive and and rosy. <laughs> you know, we have problems, you know, there's there's yeah. problems that we have. You know, I had a I had a like a dilemma of like what to call, um, what to call, I, I almost got beat up one time by a transgender because the whole world was new to me and I introduced somebody as him yeah. rather than her. And I didn't know. Yeah. And, and they so got that mad. they, they got like, really mad up? afterwards. They were like, you know, you call me a woman and like was very, was physical with me, like grabbed me. Oh, jeez. And I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. I might have even joked about it afterwards. I was like, hey, that was, you know, like he was or she. You apologize you know. like that? And they still got that like serious with you, though? They let me go. I mean, they thought that I because it was a it was a gay event. Yeah. And and so they probably thought that I should have known wow. as the host of this gay event. But I mean, I learned my lesson and but it inspired me to write a song that I perform now called no gender love jam where i was like i just don't even go near gender if it's gonna be that big of a deal like i'm like so i wrote i was like it's if a I, sensitive topic right yeah, now i wrote a love yeah, song so that doesn't have any gender articles in it so every time i refer to somebody it's a robot voice <laughs> and i don't even say it like it's a robot voice it's like this is a no gender love jam because you don't have to say woman or man, right? And it's like, you're the creature. I adore the mortal in my heart's core. I never found more in a human species life form. <laughs> it's very universal. Everybody can enjoy it. Right. That's really nice. I like that. So that's where that came from. That's perfect. So you have to do a lot of traveling. How much traveling is required for you to maintain this as like your source of income? Like how often do you get to stay home versus how much you have to add on to well it just depends how much i'm getting paid every time i go out right (laughs) but uh i mean look there's honestly almost every show i do is different you know um there's so many sources of like how i get work that i'm just like i just want to keep busy i just want to like have stuff coming in um, whether it's like touring or an acting work or hosting work or, you know, sometimes I've done some stuff that's like branded content where I've made content for a brand. So, and that, you know, like if I'm doing that kind of thing, I would be in town. I just want to like keep my calendar full with stuff that's bringing, bringing in, you know, life sustaining income. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just feel like, well, if am I, Sometimes I'll do shows or do stuff for cheaper than I would uh, at other times because there's another value to it, you know? I I think that, like, this year, though, has been a year where I've started turning some stuff down because I've gotten, luckily, gotten busy doing some, doing, you know, I've, I've been pretty busy this year. So there's certain things that's, like, it's maybe not worth the time that you could you spend going to uh, another city and buying an airfare and you know um, staying there for for two three days when I could be in town 
shooting something that is going to earn me a million more fans or or whatever, mm-hmm. earn me a, yeah fifty thousand more fans or something, you know? Yeah. So that when I do go to that town, it's worth it's much more worth it for everybody involved. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So yeah. you know what kind of crowd you might be bringing in. Yeah, when you're going to different places. Too. For me, like uh, as far as like touring, the as as the the blueprint I guess for a touring comedian is, you know, you start you start as a comedian doing these things called bringer shows, where you're local here in L.A. or or wherever you are, and they're like, we need you to bring ten people in. So you bring their ten people. They probably don't want to be there. They sit through <laughs> hours of this comedy that they may not want to see, and you go on for ten minutes, and they force laugh at you, at you or whatever. You know, maybe you get some laughs. Yeah. Um, and then you're like, man, I just can't wait till I stop doing bringer shows. And then you become like a a headliner, and I'm still doing bringer shows. Like I'm responsible for bringing people out to the shows or inspiring people to come out to the shows, whether it's like me directly reaching out to my fans or. Or the club being able to advertise me and it inspiring people to want to come in. Sure. So it's all about when you're on the road, it's like your what's your draw going to be, right? That's what affects how much you can make out there. Yeah. So it's very similar to, the, I believe, the music business. As far as like touring musicians and everything yeah. like that? It's it's pretty similar. Interesting. Yeah. Do you consider that like a good thing about the job or a bad thing that you have to travel so much? I like traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, like, I've been doing some some tours. I just did a tour in May all over Texas, and it was pretty – it was exciting because I was doing a lot of places for the first time, a lot of cities for the first time, and um, they were going really well. We were selling out most of the shows or packing it, and it was really – it was exciting, but it was exhausting. It was exhausting because – you know, Texas is the biggest state. I know. It's, it's huge. It's flat. Yeah. And and my shows were hours apart. So there were some days where I had to drive, you know, do the show at night, drive three, four hours, and you're stopping on the way because you got to pee and you got to eat or you got to get gas or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty much the full day you're driving. Then you're getting to the venue. You're setting up. You set up your merch. You set up your, your audio. You do a VIP pre-show meet and greet. So... Not only are you just doing the show, sometimes you're doing two shows at night, sometimes you're doing a VIP meet and greet, you're selling it, it's merch afterwards. So like that window of time is like from, uh, you know, when you get to the venue, you're setting up from five o'clock and you're leaving maybe midnight or something. And then you got to go to sleep and wake up early the next day and drive again. So it's like over and over and over that gets pretty tiring. So yeah, I can yeah. only imagine. Yeah. They make you, you have to set up your audio? Well, comedy clubs, I do musical comedy. So yeah. a lot of comedians or most comedians are just going up there and, you know, talking on the mic, but I have a very minimal stuff that I'm setting up, yeah. but still I like to test it out. And, you know, if I, if I don't have somebody, this tour, I actually had somebody on some of the dates, uh, to help me run the sound. So he knew what I was doing and he knew That's my, good. my cues and all that stuff. But yeah. sometimes I don't have that. Most of the time I don't have that. It was the first time I ever did it. Yeah. So I have to. I saw you one time where you had you had to like give the audio person like notes in the middle of your set. And I was like, that's got to be frustrating for him. Yeah, I kind of try to make it part of the thing because <laughs> I've done it so many times where like some people get confused in the middle of it. And you're like, you got to just make it seem yeah. like, you know, make it part of the part of the sure. show. So it doesn't. So I always tell that person who's running my stuff. I'm like, if I. If I make fun of stuff, do not take it personally. I'm just, you know, and I'm not mean to them, but right. I just get like, I, like I, I may comment on your. Yeah, I may get visibly frustrated. <laughs> Tell, uh, I'm not frustrated inside. I'm just having fun with it. So don't, you know, I always tell them, don't take it personally. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you're not hurting any audio people's feelings, right? Because they have oh, they have thin skin. Do they? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I'll tell you, most Didn't audio people think they know everything. Man. Most audio people think, well, you were, have work, worked in that industry. I work with a lot of audio men. They think they know everything about audio. <laughs> and I'll give them the simplest thing. I have this program on my computer, on my uh, iPad that I use for my show called Soundboard. And it's yeah. basically, it's music cues. There's a series of squares that say the title on them. And I say, when I tell you to hit that one that says X, hit it. You just pu- push it one time. And then when I say stop... 
or a cut, cut, cut symbol, you press it again, and that's it. And they do not get it. The, sometimes the more professional... Like, it cannot possibly be that simple. Right. It's, it's weird. Like, I'll tell a professional... with it. I'll tell a professional sound person to do it, and I'd say, like, half the time they'll mess it up, like, really bad. And then uh, I'll, I'll have a, like, college student do it, and they're perfect. And they go, okay. So yeah. I just touch, I just touch yeah, that. Yeah, it's easy. Perfect. <laughs> it's like common sense. Like a baby could almost do it. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it's really, it's really simple. I think we do that with everything in our lives that we have a lot of knowledge about, though. Yeah. That overthinking. They get in their head. They're overthinking. And I'm fully branded. And they're like, but maybe I have to add something because I'm a sound person. I'm a professional. I want to make it even more special. I'm like, nah, dude. Just hit it. Like, I'm branded. And I figured it out. Yeah. I do all this traveling. I'm so branded. Yeah. That should be my next tour. So branded. So branded. Okay. Well, my next tour, I think, is going to be called the Summer Tour, which is just going to be a few dates. Uh, summer is going to be called SPF 17. And mm. it's going to be the poster is going to be me. Just my forehead and my eyes looking up at it, and I'm totally burned except for it's written in sunscreen SPF 17 tour. That's clever. That's I've, design right there. I've already done this kind of tour with a, I did one called Zero SPF tour, but it was a few years ago. <laughs> Zero SPF? Yeah, and it was, and I was burned all over my body. <laughs> and then it said it on my chest. Yeah. So, but it's, it's 2017. It's trying to bring that SPF tour back, but it's SPF 17. Uh, and then I'm thinking in the, in the fall, is uh because i do this show called cultura about culture yes online mm -hmm. and i was gonna do the cultura tour <laughs> i think it'd be fun i say why not i say why not my last one was called gringo de mayo yeah i saw that and it was good people loved it cultura tour and then i'll do during the day i'll go out and shoot episodes for cultura mm -hmm. and then at night i'll do shows by day, documentarian. <laughs> By night, badass comedian. That's perfect. Where did that? Do you speak Spanish? Simon. Habla español también? Un poquito. Okay. That mm -hmm. means a little. If you're listening. <laughs> so yeah, yes, I speak actually, Spanish. I went to a Spanish immersion school, actually. Uh, immersion school? Immersion. Oh, Spanish I thought it was like an emergency in, school. In you're like, you I need to learn it now. Emergency school. It's very serious. I went to immersion school? It's a kindergarten all the way through middle school. So you're they, fluent? They speak Spanish to you. You know what the weird thing is, though? I am technically fluent. Mm -hmm. But the speech is the first thing to go. So I'm mm. really, like, I'm uncomfortable speaking. Yeah. But, like, if I'm listening to somebody. You understand I understand it. it perfectly. I can read it perfectly. I can still write it. Yeah. But when I speak it, it's just a lot, sl like, it comes a lot slower to me. I forget the conjugations. Like, I'm, yeah. I was fluent. I, it was my minor in college. Mm -hmm. And then I've, you know, when I go on trips to... Spanish speaking countries, it comes back. And then I've just been trying like to exercise to it more. It? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. people, it, the problem with my instinct though is that somebody speaks Spanish to me and I just speak back in English. Oh, right. right I do right, that right. thing where I just go, oh, never mind. I'm just going to, I'm just going to speak on my own. We could try um, to do anyway. the rest of the podcast in Spanish if you want to practice. I won't judge you. We could try and it would be terrible. El podcast. <laughs> I don't you say podcast. El cast de pod. I, that would be the only other way I'd know how to say it. It's probably just podcast, huh? Yeah, well, because that's a new and like invented word. Yeah, let's look it up right? on Google Translate. In the future, the maybe future it's word. like called something weird. Uh, let's see, el podcast, <laughs> el podcast. I'm looking it up. Google Translate. Okay, here we go. Podcast. Thank you guys for bearing with us. I know you can't see this. <laughs> podcast in Spanish. Oh, it's. I have just put in, and Spanish came up. So this is a question that other people, people have asked. Need, yeah, people need to know this. Okay. We were right. Yes. Okay. It's podcast, but they spell it with a capital. I don't know. <laughs> why is it a proper noun? Let's hear, let's hear how Google translates. <laughs> I put in lowercase, and they spit back podcast. They're like, it's, it's a, a proper no noun. And an uppercase. Yeah, it's uppercase. That's okay, hilarious. let's listen how they say it. Podcast. Podcast. So podcast. Like <laughs> they said in Castilian Spanish, podcast. <laughs> podcast. So as long as you put a little accent on it, you're saying it right. Yeah, they're they're trying to do an accent in English though, podcast. Because in 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 Spanish it would be podcast, podcast. Oh yeah, I guess they're saying it. podcast. Yeah, it's weird. It's podcast. like a computer-sounded voice anyway. 
Do you want to know nine great Spon- Spanish podcasts every Spanish learner should listen to? Oh. Okay. You're learning stuff. I'm, I'm looking this up. This is on FluentU.com. According to FluentU.com, here's some nine Spanish podcasts you should listen to. I'm scrolling. Oh, now it's only seven. Okay, seven Spanish Spanish podcasts you should be listening to. Why do they say nine in the title? And they only deliver seven. Lies. Two of them suck or what? Probably. Audria. Aud- Audiria. Oh, that's an ad. Sorry. <laughs> is it? Audiria, I think, is one. It's a website. Free and daily Spanish podcast. Coffee Break Spanish. Well, why don't they put it in Spanish? Let's start there. Coffee Break. Why you call it Coffee Break? You got to put... I call it a um, momento de café. That's Ooh, what that, that would sounds be. Sounds nice. Yeah. Sounds uh, peaceful. Spanish, I, Spanish pod 101. Okay. I like that name. It's clear. I know what I'm getting. Spanish obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> That's number four. I am obsessed. <laughs> Obsessedito. <laughs> Obsessedito. <laughs> <laughs> Espanol (laughs) Obsesito. (laughs) I can't stop speaking it. No puedo parar a blondo lo. In serio. That's the accent you come out with when you listen to that podcast. Yeah. I think maybe that's their thing. Okay. And then uh, language trek. Okay. All these are in English. Journey. There's not been one in Spanish yet. I guess it's for because learners. Because they're learning. They don't know. They okay. wouldn't know how to, they wouldn't know it was a podcast for them if it was in Spanish, right? Yes. They study. Yet. There's one, studyspanish.com. These are websites. Mm. And I guess they have podcasts. Um, how about this one? It's a very creative name. Yeah. Podcastinspanish.org. Shh. Man, you know where did they come getting. up with this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, notes in Spanish. Their and brand then, is clear. Number nine. Oh, they're very considerate because Fluent U is number nine, oh. and they this is their website. They see. You so see like, what they you did know there. what? Let's save the best for last. You see what they did there? That yeah. was all for them. Man, I feel so, so so had right now. They wrote that just so you would get to the bottom and be like, Fluent U. I feel hey. fooled by AdWords. Aren't we all? Wow. That was a lot of information. I feel like Ryan Seacrest on his new show. Have uh, you watched him on Kathy, the new Kathy uh, Lee and Ryan? Is there that? That? Okay. Okay. no? It's Kelly uh, Ripa. Yes. What's that show? Like my brain said Katie. He's Frick. the new Regis. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch it. He t- he just sits there and reads lists like that. Really? Yeah. Is that what they do on that? I haven't watched that show maybe in a billion years since since Regis was on it, and then I watched it on accident because I couldn't find the remote. And then the that athlete guy with the gap teeth. Yeah, he was uh, on Michael there for Strahan. a minute. He was awesome. He was on there for a minute, huh? I never saw him though. He was like a an athletic Alfred E. Newman with that smile. He was like football player meets Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. That's a wonderful combo. Yeah, I like that. You see, they're bringing American Idol back already. Really? Yeah. It was off for like two years. Was it even? Two? I don't even think it was two years. They're right? bringing it back. It's like a year. Well, who's gonna host it then? That's my question. Mm, they should give it to think? Brian Dunkelman, the guy who got fired. Wouldn't that be a twist? Yeah. That would be such a twist. Who's going to say, this is American Idol? That's, he would always say it like that. That's how Ryan Seacrest would say, this. <laughs> Go back and listen to With it. An accent? This. I don't know why he would say, he would say this, but he would almost say it. This. He said it in Spanish. Oh. This is American Idol. That's interesting. That's the pause. He would go, this, pause, is American Idol. He probably, there was probably said pause on the teleprompter. <laughs> when I went to a taping of a uh, Jimmy Kimmel, I was mm-hmm. sitting right next to the teleprompter. Mm-hmm. And I was super curious, you know, because I'm like a behind the scenes person. So I was looking at him reading the teleprompter and I kept turning around to check to see like how specific it was. All of the ad libs were written in. What? All the ad Then it's not an ad lib. So even like, so if, you know, if, if the audience laughed and he was like, I know, right? That was on the teleprompter that he said, wow. I know, right? Because they expected the audience to laugh. See? I was like, dang, he's not saying Those writers anything. are technicians. He's not even saying anything from his own brain. It's crazy. Well, what he's saying is the inflection behind it. He's really bringing yes. it to life. He is bringing, I give him that. You know? Well, <laughs> they have to time out everything out. Yeah, you they know? do. So yeah, it's fascinating. How much would you have to pay Ryan Seacrest to go back to American Idol, though? 
now that he's a daytime man. I mean, I, I he probably would do it again. I wonder who the the um, judges would be. Uh, same, you know. It's it's gonna be interesting to see. I should audition. This is a no and gender love jam because you don't have to say woman or man. <laughs> They'd be like, "What?" Yeah, I sing. I sing. This is a song that, uh, about the summer solstice. Okay. Here we go. I want to do it all night long in the summer in Alaska because the night's only three minutes long. You can play hard to get, baby. We got time. Night time don't start until 2.59. Three minutes to get our sex on doing more global warming than Exxon. We can cuddle and kiss with our noses. I'm that Jewish Eskimo. Call me Eskimosis. <laughs> <laughs> and you can save the rest for December. That's when I can do it all day in the winter. All day long. In the winter in Alaska. Because the day's twice as long as this song. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Thanks. That's hilarious. Just I only off had, the cuff, too. Well, no, I wrote that before. You gotta, oh, I, yeah. I wrote that, uh, I read that off ready. the Jimmy Kimmel teleprompter. You're, <laughs> that guy's good. Yeah. That's good. But so you're ready for your American Idol audition. You're good to go. I'm ready. You're good to go. I just gave you a sample of the song. I didn't give you the whole thing. Well, no, you can't give it all away. No, I mean. You can't give it all away. It's actually in two days. It's summer solstice. Is for, it really? Yeah, we're doing this on June 19th, and then 21st is summer solstice. Oh, dang. Yeah. This is probably going to come out tomorrow, 20th, almost. Oh, oh wow. So you guys have time to prepare. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to uh, post I'm gonna post one of my some, that song on my Facebook page, uh, a performance of it, that you'll be able to see the rest of it. Okay. I've been waiting so long, and it's finally here. The summer solstice, the longest day of the year. We don't need snow shovels. We're lowering snow levels. We're making snow angels into snow devils. That part won't be on there because that's the old version. I redid it. Oh, so that's that bonus content. Yeah, bonus content. You want the bonus content? Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm a love doctor and my minutes are billable. You'll be screaming my name until the first syllable. Because it's a short day. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I was that's like, hilarious. like Sarah Palin, you drill, baby, drillable. Because she's from Alaska. But True. if your name is Bristol, you best be on the pillable. Right? <laughs> Thrill you in Wasilla, make it stank in Fairbanks. In Juno, you know, I'm a work it out. <laughs> I admit it, I might not hit it all night in Sitka because the night is six minutes. It's further south because <laughs> of <it's> geography. <laughs> You're getting all technical. I like it. I like yeah. it. That's hilarious. So that's perfect timing. Yeah. That's perfect timing. I worked as an X, like a X Factor PA for a little bit. Oh, X Factor. Yeah. Did you I watch like that. that show. Yeah, that's like America's Got Talent almost, right? <gasps> yeah, something like that. It was a Simon Cowell one where he was the judge, right? Yeah. I did the casting call stuff, like the cattle call. Okay. Where it's like everybody that goes in for the initial auditions mm -hmm. and they sit in front of like producers and random people that were judging them. And it was kind of like a bummer. Yeah. Because people go in, right? Right. And they send through the really good people. Mm -hmm. And then they sent through like, the bad people? The bad people? Because, you know, they're going to be on the and, show. Yeah. But some of these people knew they were bad, and they were going in there because they knew they were bad, and they were just uh, trying okay. to get on the show. Just getting attention. Yeah. And then there were people that went in there that were not very good, and you can hear their audition, and they got a yes, and they came out, and they were so excited, and then you had to be like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They got a yes, and they were bad. Yeah. And because they, they just wanted to exploit them more. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, kind of a... I did America's Got Talent, so I, I, yeah, oh, and I'm, it, it didn't, I feel so neutral about it mm -hmm. because it didn't help my career and it didn't hurt my career, but it just was, it was a long process. I've never really been into that kind of like, it's not an enjoyable like way to for me to do like to be judged on a show, but I figured yeah. I'd do it, and I did it. Seems and, stressful. It was, uh, yeah, well, the way they did it the year I was in it, 2013, they had you do the first audition I did in the Pantages Theater. It was amazing. Got a standing ovation. Ooh. But they never showed that on TV. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so you still got to make the cut to the TV. Yeah. yeah, that's a bummer. So I made it to the Vegas round, and the Vegas round was hell week. It was that was torturous. They had us in for a full week, sitting in this like conference room in a hotel in Vegas, wearing the same clothes that we wore in our audition, and I wore a like long sleeve shirt with a sweater over it and it was in Vegas and it was 108 degrees and I had to be in the same clothes. Right. This was for five days. Oh. I was in the same clothes and we were in this, it was like an insane asylum because it's like 400 needy performers yeah. trying to perform and impress you for some reason, like you're in the same boat with them and they're all trying to impress you. And I'm like, I'd love to be getting some work done right now. And you can't work on your computer because everyone will talk to you. People keep talking to you and you just can't, you just be interrupted. And the food they gave you was not, I mean, I'm a very healthy eater. Yeah. So it wasn't. Not good food, huh? I had to go to Whole Foods every day and get my own stuff and bring it in. Oh, dang. That so sounds frustrating. It just was, you know, the range of the range of performers was from very amateur to professional. And, you know, by that time I was not I, I feel like, you know, I've done I've done some things in my career at least where I'm like, man, this is like <laughs> going back a couple of years, you gotta like sit in this room and just oh my God. Once you're a part of like that big crowd. Yeah. Yeah. They just treat everybody the same. It doesn't matter. And they totally they do produce the show where, you know, they they know, you know, from working in it, they, you know, they, they pick who a lot of times they have already picked Yeah, who's going on, yeah. you know, they know what so, they're looking for, but it was a cool experience to do it. And, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, to be able to see what it was, you know, I've done it and I'm, I don't think I need to do it again. I know so. dude, it is crazy. It's yeah. crazy. It was like 17, 18 hour days when I was working wow. and I don't, and I don't, I don't live in LA. Yeah. Right. So I was coming up here and I was doing 18 hour days driving in L.A. traffic to sleep on somebody's couch for like an hour and then drive in L.A. traffic back. Mm. Anytime I sat down, I immediately fell asleep. Ugh. That's how tired. I got. That's the worst. <laughs> then I tried to drive back to San Diego. Terrible idea. My God. Don't do it. Don't do it. I had to take a nap on, on some random neighborhood, pulled my car over. I had to get off the freeway because I was doing that sleep swerve. I've done it. Yeah, yeah, hard. I went yeah. from the slow lane to the fast lane. Oh, somebody honked, woke me up, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I just got off the freeway, pulled into a neighborhood, the nearest like safe looking area I could find. <sighs> Didn't even get my car turned off. And you were sleeping. I threw my seat back and I fell asleep for four hours. Oh my god! That's how tired. Four hours in that's your car—that's that's hard to do because it's very With my uncomfortable. My car on. Your car on. Idling. For four hours. <laughs> and you drive a stick. You had to have that clutch pressed in the whole time. I don't know how they work. I threw it in neutral and put my parking brake up. Oh, God. <laughs> like, I slept with the clutch in. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. It's dang. Don't do that. Yeah. Disclaimer, don't do that. Thanks, Eric, for that's doing it? this. Yeah, that's oh, that it. Was like, okay. As soon as you fall asleep in your car, it's time to go. <laughs> I like that it. abrupt ending. You like it? Yeah. Well, I mean... I do an outro. They're going to hear an outro. Oh, okay. So it hasn't ended yet. <laughs> All right. So much for that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks, Eric. Bam. That's it for this one, guys. I made it safely back to San Diego this week with no sleep swerving. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll keep joining me every Tuesday for new podcasts. If you're feeling friendly today, subscribe and leave a nice rating on iTunes, or even just share it with one person this week. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to keep in touch with me, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Courtney Diamond, or you can head over to CourtneyDiamond.com to keep up with my blog. And with that, I'm out of here. Hope you guys all have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you soon.